Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review. And reviewing a, one of the films that I enjoyed from last year, from 2018, one of my favorite films. And it's a film that stars Liam Neeson, and that is of The Commuter. And uh, once again, Liam, uh, Liam Neeson uh, collaborating, the, I think it's the fourth time collaborating with director Jomaine Collette Serra. Um, which uh, Jomaine Collette Serra, he's been most films I enjoyed, the films that, he, that he's directed. Well, the films that started Liam Neeson, well, two of the films that he did that I'm not um, big fans of, though, but um, he directed, he directed uh, Unknown, then Run All Night. But the one I uh, drove, other one I drove with Liam Neeson was um, Nonstop. I really enjoyed Nonstop. Um, but then other films he directed Orphan, and then he directed the House of Wax remake, which I enjoy. Under I think that's an underrated uh, horror film remake. And then he directed The Shallows, the shark film with uh, Blake Lively. I enjoy The Shallows. It's a good shark movie. And I enjoyed The Commuter as well. It's one of my favorite films of 2018. Uh, and I thought uh, Jomaine Sarah did a good job once, uh, with this film as well. And Liam Neeson, I thought he did was uh, I thought he did a pretty much a spot on job as this character named Michael. Um, although I mentioned probably mentioned my, my list though, um, him on top of this train that doesn't happen in the movie. I don't know why they put that on there though. Um, and they got other a uh, decent uh, supporting cast, um, Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, which they uh, they were together in the in the Conjuring movies one and two as the Warrens. Uh, and then you got Jonathan Banks, who's been in uh, other films, and also including the. Um, I think it was both the Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul show. But he's been in other films that I've I've seen him in, like from Beverly Hills Cop, Under Siege Two. Flipper, who was in that movie. Um, but he's a recognizable guy if you recognize him, though. And then you got Sam Neill, who was in it just for a little bit from the beginning at the end, though. So, but I, but I enjoy Sam Neill, so it was... Although, <laughs> this came out last year, then the next month after... This came out in January, and the next month in February, Liam Neeson... But not Liam Neeson, Sam Neill, Peter Rabbit... I rented on Peter Rabbit, and that to me that was one of his most embarrassing roles. So, well, I'll say, even though his, his his just like that film, his role is limited in this film, but a better performance than than in Peter Rabbit. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but the film came out, it was given mixed reception, it was a 57% of Rotten Tomatoes, and a 6.3 on IMDb. Um, it didn't do well domestically when it came out, because it came out in January. It was on a budget of $40 million, domestically made 36 but, uh, it did, it did kind of fare better overseas, though, made, like, a little over $100 million, though, but not in the same, not in the same, uh, what, uh, non-stop made, though. But the overall supporting cast, including Liam Neeson, all did a good job. Um, the, the, in this film, um, Liam Neeson, he is his character named Michael, which um, I like how the way it opens up, where how it shows his character is going through his day-to-day -day life, how he's like, what he usually do, gets out of bed, you know, gets ready for work, and he rides the train every day, you know, meeting with the, like, since he's, on, uh, he's been riding on the train every day for the past 10, year, for 10 years, and even including with regulars, like, Meeting with Jonathan Banks, um, and so I like how the way it opens up, and then when uh, like how he's in the station, like everything's all the people around him are like fast until they all disappear until he's like the only one in the station, and then it says the commuter. I like how the way that's done, and he's like his insurance salesman, but then he gets called in the office where after all you know years of being there, they fire him. So he loses his job, and on top of that, you know, with his the tuition and his son's going to college and all that. So all that just 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 dropped that was just dropped in his lap, <laughs> and made feel feel bad for the guy. <laughs> and also, especially also, because he meets with Patrick Wilson at a bar, because um 
he was also before the insurance event. He was also an ex cop as well. He used to be a cop. So um, Patrick Wilson is talking with him, and he was a, a friend of his. And Sam Yelk walks in. He is now like the ca- the new police captain. So then he goes and he uh, catches the train, and he finds he forgot his phone, and then he's just running on the train. Um, he, uh, this mysterious woman played by Vera Farmiga calls herself Joanna. Uh, talks to him, saying that, um, you know, uh, how, how the whole thing goes, like, hypothetically, a little experiment, um, guy who likes you rides on the train every day, you see a lot of people, right, and, um, what if you can do this one little thing, there's, this per- there's a pastor on this train that doesn't belong, and you need to point, you need to, uh, you identify and point them out, there's also 25, uh, grand in the bathroom, you find the passenger, and with a with a bag, with something that also that doesn't belong, but some of the people want. If you point that out. You point that person out. There's an additional seventy five hundred for you. So total hundred grand total, and that's it. And now, believe me, he gets put into the situation where first he's like looking, scanning through the passengers, and he goes to the bathroom, he finds some of the money. And then he gets a call uh, from Vera Famiga saying you took the money. Now you, you're put. Now you put in the situation you have to put, uh, find the the passenger. And by the next stop, uh, a a, woman, a girl um, comes up to him, saying that uh, you're now being watched, and he gives him gives him um, an envelope, and it contains his wife's uh, wedding ring. That they say that they know, they know they know about his family and um, do this and your family won't be harmed. So, and it's a way. And to me, I guess it kind of like similarities, like you know, like nonstop in a way, because it's a uh, there's a, you know a mystery person involved in all this. So, and he talks with Jonathan Banks, and like he's like nonchalantly trying to nonchalantly you know for him to find, but uh, Vera Farmiga calls him, and he should tell him he shouldn't have done that because he looks outside in the train where Jonathan Banks got off, and then someone just pushes him in the street and gets hit by a bus. So you don't know the, the consequences of his actions. So, and though this whole time he's just, he's just this whole time he's just looking. Um, because they're, because the one, the one person is going to Cold Spring and he's narrowing it down to, uh, the certain uh, amount of people. And, like, from one, he gets, like, a tussle to this one person he thinks is the person, um, oh, the person that they need to find is, um, the, our, their name is Prin. That's the person who's the wit, uh, which find it's a witness that he's, that, uh, that they're looking for. But it goes by the name of Prin. He finds a guy who... Thinks is Prin, gets a little tussle with him, but it turns out he's not. He is a federal agent, and he's dead when he finds him underneath the train. He wasn't the person, and one point where um, where he tries, well, he was underneath the carriage to avoid the police, but when the train starts going, he rolls underneath and tries to get back on the train, and he loses some of his money. <laughs> And then he goes because he plays a card game with a guy that he knows, with some other guy, which he um, also is also going to Cold Spring, he, which he thinks he's a person that doesn't belong either. So and he explains that the two guys the same situation that that De Vera Farmiga told him. And it was a, it was a I always enjoy the whole mystery of the whole this how he's gonna get out of this as well you know it's just. Um, pacing was overall fine uh, for 105 minutes. It's how the way he was just pro- he's just progressing how to. It's like with nonstop when he was trying to identify the person who was try- who was threatening to um, you know, kill someone every 20 minutes. That was nonstop, you know, and it was like something like that though. It was getting in the mystery like how in the way like that nonstop. And some of the directing choices, like, too, like, with the, the director, like, how, and I'll stop, like, how he's showing, like, we see the text messages and all that stuff. And 
it was like so I see some of the certain choices like he did in this film, which I like that because this guy shows that he's capable of doing little touches like that. So, um, and then he gets into a fight with this one guy, um, who's also involved this, and in which he beats with a, a guitar, which I, I thought was kind of funny. He beats this guy with a guitar. And then he gets thrown off the window because the and he gets kind of crushed by an oncoming train going the other way. He gets thrown off the window. <laughs> oh no! I forgot to mention that um, that uh, there was another guy who was also um, which he thinks is which I thought it was it was like the funniest part of the movie where this guy's a broker and he's and he's a, and he's a douchebag, a dick basically. Um, he tells me he's a broker and um, he's just being a dick to William Liam Neeson and. Maybe laugh is like, on behalf on behalf of the American middle class, fuck you. That's what he does. He just says that and just just gives just gives him the middle finger. <laughs> on behalf of the middle of the American middle class, fuck you. I I I had a very laugh at that. That was the that, that was like the funniest part of the movie. <laughs> and like Liam Neeson, he does a good job acting. You know, he does. Most of the films I I've enjoyed him, and never once he doesn't give a bad performance. Even he's given delivering like uh, humor nonchalantly like that, and it just makes me laugh. Um, until one thing leads to another, where he tell uh, the um, the the police are notified that he has the gun, and um, they try to pull the the pull the brake on the train. The brakes are gone. And the, the engineer is dead, so they have to uh, detach the lead car. Everyone is in the back. And this is again the part of the third act where okay, um, where the uh, how the, the where the train derails, um, where the how the train when, when the train derails, it's not the best. It's not the best effects. It's it's just like it's a uh, it's a CG how the train when the train derails. I'll just put it that way. It's not the best effects. I will say that though. And. When he talks, um, when they find out that the witness is this girl named Sophia, she ex explains that, that she took some evidence, because earlier, they were on the news, there was this guy who was a city planner, who, say they say they committed suicide, but the, the witness, Sophia, says that, um, it wasn't, that, um, this guy, um, what, well, when the FBI, at the end of the film, the FBI says that he was, it, it was her cousin, that's what he said, the, um, the FBI agent says. But she explains that um, he was in deep with some people, and two guys, they came up, they, they, they talked to him, and then they were yelling, and then they were hitting him, and then they threw him out the window. And both these two men, they were cops. So, and because it was some evidence that, that they wanted, and she took it. So, they told her to get on the train to Cold Spring. So, that's how she ended up there. Um... So, but after the train derailment, uh, the police get there. Sam Neill gets there. Th surround the train. Um, then Patrick Wilson is there, and he's going to try and negotiate, talk to him, and and I I I'm, I automatically suspect that that he was he was in cahoots with the bad guy because. I mean, you see him for the, only at the start, then he comes back in. So I had to assume that he was in cahoots with the with the with the with the bad guys. I mean, he's not the main bad guys. It was the people, the more powerful people that were involved that made him. But like someone like Vera Farmiga as well. So, um, but um, it confirmed that he was a bad guy because the witness told Liam Neeson that the 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 one said like doing the like a noble thing, and when Patrick Wilson said like. Someone's like uh, said doing uh, something noble to Liam Neeson. Light bulb, light bulb. It clicked on that he and the witness. What to what he told to what he told him. He's one of the bad guys that killed the that's that city planner. Then they get into, they get into a fight, um, a little bit of tussle, and even a, even the witness and a couple another passenger they try to help out as well. So I, I like that like. Well, what they said so the passengers that standing while he while Liam Neeson's getting his um butt kicked, at least like, at least one or two of them try to help out, but to no avail. And then the outside the the sniper is watching like through through infrared, 
like um, Patrick Wilson, he he was blue because um, like for friendly because he had this, the thing he had on him when he was tagged, and like Liam Neeson was like yellow and all that. But uh, Liam Neeson did a switch, so the sniper takes out Patrick Wilson, and which is which is was kind of another conf uh, a confusing thing that made me kind of like scratching myself like this, like how because. If Patrick Wilson was one of the villains, even with the people he's working for, how was he able to get out of this when he was able to, you know, to get the witness and all that stuff? So I don't know how it was how it was, he was able to get out of that when the police are watching, even even with a sniper watching, you know, through the scope and all that though, m m monitoring monitoring his move. So I don't know how that that how that part was gonna work. So that just left me like scratching like this. So, but, but yeah, with the, with the CG derailment and how, with the Patrick Wilson's involvement and all that, so, two nitpicks though, but it still overall didn't hurt the movie for me, because I still enjoyed the movie. But after that, everyone is safe, um, Sam Neill, uh, thanks with, uh, Mike, uh, Mike, uh, Liam Neeson's character. And that one uh, witness, um, the witness is fine. And um, there was another passenger that was trying to help uh, get Patrick Wilson, but he got shot. But he's fine. And then sometime later, um, he meets Lee Mason meets with Vera Farmiga back on the train, and asks you know that one little thing, and she says what little what was it what is it? And then Lee Mason shows uh, her his badge. Now he's back on the police force, and. And basically, you know, he Liam Neeson smiles, so he's gonna arrest her. So, so yeah, it, it's a much, it's a shorter review, but um, it's not much. It's it's, been, it's very, it's a very simple premise. It's a little way, kind of like nonstop in a way. But I, I if it, and how do I explain it? It's just probably I say it's Liam Neeson's best, probably since nonstop, probably because I'm probably making comparisons though. But still, but I enjoy the commuter. That's why I put on my favorites list of last year. Lee Mason does a top-notch job. It's um, Vera Farmiga, right there, and Patrick Wilson, and Sam Neill for the little role that he had. Support and Jonathan Banks too. Support guys overall was very good, and uh, it was good directing by Jermaine uh, Colette Sarah. Pacing was fine, but like I said, the two nitpicks with the, the CG derailment and how with Patrick Wilson's situation in there, how he's gonna get out of that. I don't know how, but still, but um. But overall, I still, I still, I, I still enjoy the film, and yeah, it's just too bad it didn't do that much when it came out. So, but the director, but Jermaine Cluster, it shows he's still he uh, made another good movie. Like I said, House of Wax, um, Orphan, The Shallows, Nonstop. He's a he, he's a good he's a good, he shows he's a, a capable director. That's what I'm trying to point out. He shows he's a capable director. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fans of Unknown or not or Run All Night though, but um, and I know he's and I know he's directing uh, uh, a next his next film Jungle Cruise with Dwayne Johnson, which is based on a an, attra an attraction, which I think the film got delayed. I think it was supposed to come out like sometime like late like towards towards the end of this year but it got delayed so I don't know how that film's gonna go so but hey but we'll, 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 his track record was is overall very so, overall solid so I'll, if Jungle Cruise comes out I'll give it a chance so because I guess this director is does a solid enough job with the most of his movies so I'll give that a chance when if, if I ever see a trailer for that film but this film, Liam Neeson, Jonathan Banks, Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, Sam Neill for the little role he has. Good movie. That's why I put this on my list of 2018. Um, pacing is fine. The whole mystery of the how he's... It's kind of like, like I said, nonstop trying to identify the person, whoever is doing this. Well, he, he, he knows who's doing this, so, but trying to identify the passenger. The whole thing he's trying to do. Like, like in nonstop, he's trying to identify the person who's trying to... Uh, who's killing the people on the on the plane? But in this though, he knows who the bad guy is. But I'm trying to find the passenger, so it's a little way to, like a little comparisons to nonstop. But I 
But anyway, um, if anyone's not seen The Commuter, check it out if you if you like it, it or not. But to me, I enjoyed it. And another good film from uh, from actor Liam Neeson. I enjoy Liam Neeson. I definitely say I like this better than the Taken the those Taken the Taken two and two and three. God, I mean, Taken two and three. This was worse. Awful sequels. And I would definitely say Jermaine Clauser is a much better director than the guy who did the two sequels. What was it, Olivia Megaton or Megatron? <laughs> Yeah, this is funny how it is. His his last name sounds like the leader of the Decept Decepticons. Yeah, I would say he's definitely a much better director than that director, Olivia Megaton, which he also directed the Transporter Three, which I did not like either. I don't know how that guy directed those movies. Get more jobs. I mean, but yeah, definitely better than the Taken sequels. Definitely, when compared with Liam Neeson. But anyway, yeah. But that's my review on the commuter. I give it a thumbs up. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned on the next uh, movie review. Later.